Now that we've seen how to apply linearity in circuits with voltage sources, let's see how that extends to circuits with current sources. Um, so how about we, let's use the same circuit that we use to introduce linearity for voltage sources. Just a simple series circuit with two resistors, but instead of a voltage source here, I'm going to replace it with a current source. So just like before, let's set this be 1K and this can be 4K. We'll designate this as our output resistor, so we're interested in the voltage drop across that output resistor. We'll call it V out. And um, let's let, I'll call this I in, and let's give it a value of 10 milliamps. Okay, so here's an example circuit that I want to show you how to use linearity to um, kind of make a shortcut for solving it. So, um, what we want to do, just like before, we want to make an equation for V out in terms of I in. So last time when we did this with voltage sources, we wanted to make an equation for V out in terms of V in, and whatever is being multiplied by our V in, that was our scale factor K. So now we don't have a V in, we have an I in. So how is this going to work? So the goal, first, we want to write the out in terms of I in. Okay, so this is a series circuit. That means that the current is going to be the same everywhere. So the current going through the 1K ohm resistor, the 4K ohm resistor is all going to be this I in. So um, we this actually ends up being quite a bit easier than for the voltage source. We have that voltage drop at this output resistor is just going to be using Ohm's law I in times this 4K Ohm because that's the value of that resistor. So it's just V equals IR. Um, so in this case, our I in is 10 milliamps, so that's 0 0.01 amps times 4,000, this is going to give us 40 volts. Okay, so our V out is 40 volts if our I in is 10 milliamps. So in this case, the scale factor K is equal to what's getting multiplied by I in. Okay, is multiplied by I in. Okay, so if you get this formula, whatever constant that is being multiplied by our input current is going to be our scale factor. So the current is getting scaled in this case by 4,000. Um, so in this case, our K is equal to the R out. That won't always necessarily be the case, but for a simple series circuit like that, this is what's scaling um, our current. Um, so then if we, if we look at a different circuit and try to come up with this same function of V out in terms of I in, um, we're going to end up with a different scale factor. So now that we've seen kind of a simple example, let me show you of how this would work, how we would go about using linearity in um, a circuit that is not just series. So Let's look at example two. Suppose we have um, suppose we have a current source, and that's going to go into a series parallel circuit. So suppose we have one resistor here. This will be a four ohm resistor, and then that's in parallel with two resistors in series. Okay, so this can be twelve ohms, and this can be eight ohms. Suppose we designate this to be our output resistor, so this is going to be our V out. And now um, I'm going to call this my IS because that's my source current. My IS is going to come up here and it's going to reach this node. Some of it's going to split down here and take the path through the 4 ohm resistor. So I'll say this is, I'll label this current as I1 that takes that path. And then the current that takes the other path, let's label this I2. Now by um, KCL, we know that 
the sum of the currents going into the node is equal to the sum of currents going out, right? So we have IS is equal to I1 plus I2. So um, if we want to use linearity, we might be asked something like find V out when IS is equal to 30 amps and also 45 amps, okay? So if we don't use linearity, um, for every value of our source current, we have to solve the entire circuit again. If we do use linearity, we come up with a formula unique to this circuit that we get to use over and over and over again for different input source current. Okay, so let's do it. Um, here, we have that IS is equal to I1 plus I2 by KCL. Okay, so we stated that already. Now, um, in order to come up with a, in order to relate voltage to these currents, we're going to have to find the equivalent resistance. Okay, so we want REQ. REQ is going to be um, a combination of series and parallel resistors. I like to start on this side and work my way towards the source for calculating R equivalent. So over here we have a branch with two resistors in series, the 12 ohm and the 8 ohm um, resistor. So I can replace these two resistors with one resistor of value 12 plus 8, which is 20 ohms. So we have a 20 ohm resistor in parallel with this 4 ohm resistor. And then we still have our source current here. Okay, great. So now to find our equivalent between the 4 ohm resistor and the 20 ohm resistor, our equivalent will be 1 over 1 over 4 plus 1 over 20, which gives me 10 over 3 ohms. So our equivalent circuit is a basic series circuit with one resistor of value 10 over 3 ohms. So that means that if I have a source current that is hooked up to this resistor, there's going to be a voltage drop across this equivalent resistance. So um, the voltage coming out of the source is um, going to be a function of IS times R equivalent. IS is my source voltage, R equivalent is this value that I just found. So I can write this as 10 over 3 times IS, and that's my VS. Um, VS is my source voltage, so it's another way of saying V in, right? So in this case, V source is my V in. Okay, great. So if the goal is to write V out in terms of I in, um, in this case, my I in is going to be labeled as IS because I have a source current. Great, so now that we have notation set, um, we have that our source, if you look back at what's happening in this circuit, we have that this source is connected directly to our 4 ohm resistor, right? And then after that there's a branch with um, the other two resistors and I combine those to get a 20 ohm resistor. Okay, so I'm kind of taking a step backwards in my um, R equivalent calculation. But the key thing here is that um, the voltage across our 4 ohm resistor is going to be exactly the same as the voltage that's supplied by our source. So um, we'll have that if this is I1 and this is I2 and this is our IS, we have that voltage across the 4 ohm resistor is equal to I1 times 4. Okay, so um, this voltage across the 4 ohm resistor, since it's connected directly in parallel with our source, is actually going to be equal to our VS, right? So our VS is this thing here in terms of IS. So let me combine these equations into one. I have that 4I1 is equal to VS 
which is equal to 10 over 3 I S. Okay, great. So um, this implies that, do some more simplification, I1 is equal to um, I S times 10 over 3 times 1 over 4. So this is going to be 5 6 of I S. Okay. So let's look at our KCL equation again. By KCL, we had that IS is equal to I1 plus I2. And we can now write our I1 as 5 over 6 IS. So we have IS is equal to 5 6 sorry about that, uh, 5, 6, I, S plus I, 2. Um, this implies that I, 2 is equal to 1, 6 of I, S, right? So I, S over 6. Then, therefore, we can say that our V out, so the voltage drop across this 8 ohm resistor, now that we have an expression for I2, V out is equal to I2 times our output resistor was the 8 ohm resistor. Our I2 we can write in terms of IS, so this is 8 times IS over 6, so this is 4 thirds IS. Okay, great. So, um, if this is equal to our V out, now we have an equation for V out in terms of I S. And that was the goal, right? This is how linearity works. We write V out in terms of our input. So for a current source, it'll be V out times is equal to some constant times our input current. So this thing is our scale factor k and we can now go answer our questions. So at the beginning of the problem we were asked um, find V out when IS is equal to 30 amps and 45 amps. Great, so all I have to do is I want to find V out when IS is equal to 30. That's going to be 4 thirds times 30, so that'll be 40 volts. And next I want to know what V out is when IS is equal to 45, and that would be 4 thirds times 45, which is 60 volts. Okay, so once you come up with your equation, now we can apply this as many times as we need to for any variable amount of source current without having to go back and solve the entire um, circuit all over again.